grabbed me at gunpoint and uh, drove me away. That was a Friday, uh, some 20, 25 kilometers away from the school into a jungle area. And uh, their purpose was to, uh, they accused me that you are, uh, you are from South India, you are in among our people, you are running a school, but that's not the purpose. You are collecting money or uh, you are converting people into Christianity. Uh, this and that, so many things. Uh, anyway, uh, so they took me there and just like uh, you, were, you, were, you were hearing before, uh, I was not able to tell anything to my family when they were taking me, just like when you are transferred from one prison to another prison, at least you wish that you inform the family. And that terrible feeling um, that came to me also at that time that at least my family should know what happened. But uh, this happened all of a sudden, this Friday, March 6, 1992, they came, they took me at gunpoint from my office, from the school office, and uh, uh, drove this uh, to the jungle, and there they made me sit down. Uh, on the way, they wanted to uh, blindfold me, and I said, please don't blindfold me, I'll be here. Now, they kidnapped me in, a, in an old truck, hijacked truck. And uh, it's a long story. I don't have time to explain everything, how it all happened. So anyway, they wanted to blindfold, and then they took out a syringe uh, to inject me. I didn't know what it was. I said, please, don't, don't inject me. I will be very quiet. I will not speak a word. So they did not. They did not blindfold me. They did not inject me. But after reaching there, they asked me to get down from this truck, old hijacked truck, and I sat there, and these fellows... Uh, all these five men, you know, they're very young. They're like my children, even younger than my own children. Uh, they, you know, they all have guns. They, they, they talk very rude. They have no respect. Um, you know, if you start talking, they'll say, shut up, don't talk. So, you know, you cannot say much. But on the way, while they were taking, there was one guy who was their leader. Uh, I was talking to him and said, I suppose you have a family. I have a family and children and so on. You know, why you want to do like this? Uh, you know, if you are really for money, please give me time. Somehow I will arrange the money. Now, if they were to ask a huge amount of money, I don't have the money. But that's the way at least I thought I would buy the time from them. And uh, then, you know, somehow either arrange the money or leave the place or whatever. So anyway, this man listened, did not say anything, just constantly told me, you know, keep quiet, you know, and so on. After reaching there, they made me to sit down and uh, nearby a pit. There was already a pit there. And uh, I thought they were going to shoot me from behind and leave. If they, if they only wanted money, they could have simply said in the office itself that give me money, give us money, and then, uh, you know, we will leave you or whatever. But they didn't, money was not their main purpose. They wanted to kill me. Uh, they did not like the school. There were enemies who were against the Christians, against the school. They organized it. We came to know later. And so anyway, um, and these, three, uh, these uh, guys went and talked among themselves. I could uh, overhear them. Now, I understand their language as well. But they did not know that I understand their language. Uh, they, though I don't understand 100%, I understand their language. And so I overheard them speak. And this older guy said, okay, let's not finish the job today. Let's take money first, and then we will plan again. And I pretended like as if I didn't know anything. I didn't understand whatever they were talking. And these guys came back and they said, okay, this is the deal. Tomorrow, by this time, that is Saturday, you give us 30,000 rupees. Now, that's a small amount today. But they knew exactly how much money we had in the bank. They knew that. And they told me, even though even they have links with everybody, they go to the bank, this place, whole place is, uh, you know, organized in such a way. So I said, yes, yes, sir, I will give. So the next day, anyway, uh, they let me go. The same truck that took me there, they stayed back. The truck brought me back most of the way. And uh, this was, by this time, it is way past 1 o'clock or 1.30 or something like that at night. Came back to the school. Uh, my family lives in the town. This is in the middle somewhere, you know, between the place they took me and my family. So I came back to the school and uh, went back home. My family didn't know anything. 
by the time I came back to the school, the little church there, all men and women were all there in the school praying. And I came back and uh, I said, I'm here. Uh, they were still praying even after we came back. Amen. And uh, so um, then by the time somebody went to the police station to inform and immediately there was a curfew, uh, there was a search going on. And uh, so I took my motorcycle, I was riding a motorcycle at that time, a small little motorcycle, 100cc bike, and I took it, I went home. Now as I started, they told me, please don't go, there is already curfew there. Now, when there is a curfew, you are not supposed to come out. They will shoot you. The army will shoot you. Because of insurgency, there is a constant curfew there up in northeast, most, most every evening and nights and so on. So I said, no, I'm going. So I took my bike, went home. You know, on the way again, you know, I had an, uh, an accident because I was out of my mind. I didn't know what was construction was going on. The road had blocked and I just said wind hit the fence and fell down and, and scraped my hand and all those things and anyway reached there. But just before reaching home the army stopped me again at night. They flashed their light on me and I had to stop. They asked me where are you coming from? You know that there is curfew here. We can shoot you now. Uh, I said no sorry I, I, I don't know. Where are you going? And I said the name of one person uh, that uh, an important person there, I'm going to meet him, there is an urgency and so on. Do you know that Father Mathai was kidnapped? I said, I don't know. <laughs> they asked me directly. Now, if I am saying, yes, I'm, uh, I, they asked me Father Mathai because this military, they talk, think that all pastors are, you know, like Roman Catholic fathers, so they call Father, Father Mathai. And uh, so I said, no, I'm sorry, I don't know. I had to tell them like that and uh, so they let me go and I reached home, my family didn't know anything and uh, I come home with bleeding on my hand everywhere and, and um, so next day, you know, my wife early morning went and met other people, I could not come out and uh, arrange the money and uh, according to that, I myself had to go and pay the money in a, in a photo studio that they have specified. and. Uh, <clears throat> What happened was, I thought, okay, now they will not uh, harass me or my family anymore. It's over. Uh, they got the money. But a few days afterwards, they came right back to my house. My daughter was alone there. And uh, that's again another miracle that day. I just left home. My wife and I, we just left home, came to the airport to bring our oldest son down to south to put him in college there. And that's the time terrorists came back to home and they did not do anything to my daughter, but they threatened and said that, we know where your father is. You are not telling the truth. We'll find out. And uh, so I took my son and came down to Bangalore to put him in college. My wife went back home and all these things happened. She sends me a telegram at that time, you know, telegrams were still going on and so stay there, don't come back, we have trouble here. Uh, so I stayed with my parents for one month and during that time she herself arranged and packed everything and just came out and so that's why he, we came down to south, to Bangalore. And we left the school there, hand over to the local church. Uh, it's a Christian school that we started with the hope of starting Bible college along with that and uh, we were not, uh, we couldn't do it. And uh, so we handed over the school uh, you know, it's a good school. Uh, we have other fellow Christian partners uh, to run the school. So th the school is not running very well there. They had trouble again. So ethnic trouble between the Kuki and the tribe and the Naga tribe. And uh, uh, school building is there, but they are not running the school any longer. But the Lord brought us back to south and helped us to start the Bible college there. 